Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am your host, That One Camera Guy, and in this episode, I am gonna tell you how to make a really powerful video editing machine. Before I even continue on, I'm just gonna tell you right now the results. Having a good CPU that you can overclock and also a high-end GPU along with uh, GPU will as definitely accelerate your editing experience. It's guaranteed. So I wanted to get that out of the way right now. The GTX 980 Ti, pound for pound for whatever it is, definitely delivered on the editing experience as well as the rendering experience for what I do. So I'm just gonna tell you that right now before we jump into it. I'm gonna be showing you some charts and information as far as what I got. I went ahead and did some rendering tests. I did just some, uh, I, did, I did all those other tests like the 3D Mark, um, Uniheaven, um, the ROG tests from RealBench. But at the end of the day, it, it didn't really make any sense because I'm not really trying to tell you how well the system's gonna perform as for a gamer. Really, I'm just gonna tell you how it performs for a videographer or a photographer and how all the parts I chose in part one um, do that. By the way, if you haven't seen the other parts, part one and part two should show up somewhere with the little eye icon, one side or the other. I don't know where it goes. I, I really can't remember. It's either here or over here. You can click on that and see part one and part two. Part one, I told you about the parts. Part two, I did a quick build. 13 minute long build video, but yeah, that's the point. I went and built this machine because I wanted to have a really enjoyable editing experience. That was it, that was the bottom line. My older machine just couldn't handle anything at 4K or even the C100's AVC HD footage, it struggled. So I needed to build a system for the next few, few years of what I was planning to do. And I picked out all the parts based on just advice and information I got from YouTube and on the internet. Now, as far as the tests that I did, I did some rendering tests with the, the CPU and the GPU on and off. So in Adobe Premiere Pro, when you render, you can enable and disable the GPU uh, having any effect on rendering. So what I did was I ran a test and here's the test results. Let me explain the, the test. I did four of them. The first one is there's a timeline with four clips that are on a 4K timeline and they're all kind of shrunk down. And that's the first test. You just render out 30 seconds of that. The second test is I took two of those clips and I put a Gaussian blur on two of them and I increased the speed to 400% on two of the other ones. My, my third test is I kept all those two effects the same but I added a warp stabilization on one of the clips. And the last and final fourth test, I took the same setup, but I added color, um, I color graded all four of those clips to see what impact it would make. So that is the test that I did. Those are the four tests that I did. All right, so as far as performance on the first one, it's set in seconds. So the number you're seeing is in seconds. The first test, I saw a 52% in par, uh, performance increase from using the CPU only to using the GPU as well. I wanna stress that it doesn't mean it's only using the GPU, it's actually still using both the CPU and the GPU when you enable GPU uh, acceleration basically. So just keep that in mind, it's actually using both for the shorter bars. The second test was 54% increase in performance. The third test was 67, which was much more substantial. And the biggest jump was the last test, which I saw an 83% increase in overall performance, which was mind blowing to see that. And what you're gonna notice on the chart is that the performance with the GPU is very consistent across the board. It didn't even increase further down. It was about 100 seconds no matter how many more effects I applied on the, the 30 second clips. That was it. So what you can deduce from this is that you are going to get substantially better performance with GPU acceleration when you have a lot of effects applied to it. Okay, that is, that is 
going to happen. You are going to get better results with the GPU enabled. The next test I did, same exact test. Now this next test is going over the overclocking performance. I went ahead and overclocked my CPU from 3.3 gigahertz to 4.4, which was the most stable for it. And then you can see the results, the same exact thing. There was roughly a 20% increase in performance across the board for all different tests. And keep this in mind, this test actually included the GPU. So it was the CPU increased and also included the GPU together. So it went from 4.4 to 4.4 gigahertz and you saw a pronounced 20% increase in performance. That's a big thing um, for a lot of you because you may wa not want to overclock your system for stability and reasons of making sure your CPU lasts a long time, but I think the benefit is there to overclock the CPU. So if you get the 5820K, overclocking to around 4.3, 4.4 is very doable. Uh, it is completely worth it. Do it. You want to increase the CPU performance by overclocking it. Just make sure you get a really good cooler in order to be able to manage those temperatures and performance. Finally, I did some tests. I popped in my old GPU, which is the GTX 760. It ran 1080p clips perfectly, just fine. I went ahead and popped it into the system. And in terms of rendering, what's really interesting is if you're just rendering a clip with no effects on it, it makes zero difference. There is zero difference at all. You're not gonna see a bump whatsoever. But as soon as you apply all those effects onto your timeline, that's when you see the GTX 980 Ti pull through. You definitely will see it. I want to stress that what I noticed was the utilization rate on the GTX 760 was always at 99% for the majority of the rendering that I did, whereas the GTX 980 Ti was around 60%. So that means there's a, still a lot of headroom left for the GTX 980 Ti in order to apply more performance or Adobe is just not utilizing all of it at all. But what you're noticing is that yes, there is a difference when you start to apply substantial amount of graphics onto your timeline. So just keep that in mind. All right, then the last thing I wanna talk about, actually there's a couple more things, is I upgraded my boot drive and scratch drive to an NVMe SSD, which had a 2500 megabytes per second read and 1500 megabytes per second write, which was a Samsung 950 Pro. I also set my media storage drive to an SSD RAID up to two terabytes, and finally a separate SSD for exporting. This would ensure there'd be no bottlenecks at all with performance. Now, I'm gonna be discussing the overall experience of just editing. What I noticed was my program just loaded in seconds. Adobe just loaded in seconds. I'm not saying in two, three seconds, but maybe five to 10 seconds, Adobe Premiere Pro was open. Once Premiere Pro was open and I loaded up my project file, like a 10, 13 minute file project with all these clips in there, it did it within seconds. Within five seconds, everything was loaded, even shorter than that. So that wasn't happening on my old machine. So what I'm gonna tell you, if you want to be able just to load up the program and start editing, get the SSD RAID along with the Samsung 950 Pro. That's my recommendation for you. It had the Samsung 950 Pro also double as your scratch drive because it's loading up all the cache files right away into your system that it already built and it just, it just flies. Importing files into your project goes so quickly. I can't even explain it. I'll record 16, 20 gigabytes of files. I drag it in there within 10 seconds. It's good to go. I, I don't have to wait for it to finish doing its thing. It's ready to move. Uh, comparison between the 760 and the 980 Ti, timeline performance, big, big difference. When you are working on a seven, uh, timeline with the 760 with 4K, it just drags, it drags. You, you just can't handle it. It just can't handle it. It really can't. But as soon as you go with the 980 Ti, it runs smoothly. Exactly as what Dave Dugdale specified in his test the 980 Ti makes huge difference in timeline performance for 4K footage. 
So if you want to be able to edit multiple clips and add some simple effects onto it, you're going to see the results. So basically as an editor, you don't want to do your color grading until the very end or you don't want to add any other effects until the very end once you've already kind of edited your timeline. And for me, it, it, this machine is basically a seamless transition from 1080 to 4K. I'm being, I'm able to do the stuff I did in 1080 and 4 and 1080p plus more than what I was able to do with my old machine. I've removed all bottlenecks. I've given it, I've given the computer a six core processor overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. The GTX 980 Ti, I added a SSD RAID, a NVMe set, a SSD drive for my scratch and cache files and another separate export drive, and finally a backup drive to back up all my files. It just runs. It just runs. So if you are looking to build your first editing machine that, I will say my recommendation is don't compromise. Never compromise on a video editing machine. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Because as soon as you compromise, you're gonna lose features. So for example, maybe you're just gonna stick with a four core system, a quad core with eight threads. Um, a Premiere Pro is gonna take advantage of the six core processor versus one that's four core. So stick with the X99 system is my recommendation with the Haswell E and then Broadwell E is coming around. So if you did buy a processor, I think it stayed, it's gonna stay the same architecture. Once the eight and 10 core processors come out, the prices may drop. So I could theoretically upgrade my CPU again if there is an added benefit to it. So basically all I'm saying is if you want a really solid 4K editing machine, consider the specs that I have on this system. Um, storage is going to be your biggest issue. You're going to want to do something. I have a dro I use a Drobo to store a lot of my files because I want to be able to back it up. I, you know, I've lost files before. I just can't tolerate that again. I also went ahead and picked up two five terabyte hard drives. They were on sale from BH Photo um, at a really good price. And I'm going to probably put those either in a RAID 1 configuration, I think. Yeah, RAID 1 configuration into the machine for added security as well. So with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video for the amount of time and testing it took to get through. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you really enjoyed the videos I'm producing on my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And that's it. I will catch you guys on the next video. I'll see you then. Bye.